very stylish girl. How do I look? My God, man. Do you know what this means? This ghetto's gonna be turned upside down, I tell you. Upside down. If you get on his bad side, brother, you're done for. Now, it's only a matter of time before he finds out. And when he does, no matter where he is, get ready, gentlemen, because hell's a coming. 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 You think you're the best? I hope you are. Gundam Mobile Suit is a fully articulated, fully equipped machine, armed with the most sophisticated weaponry known to man. You have to be the best. King, you are listening to Gundam at MAHQ. End of discussion! Debate is over, you will write a formal apology. I will what? A formal apology! You will kowtow, you will step and fetch. Frank, if you think you can get me... Get used to it, it's the way of the world. If you're so hot on discipline, then Gun damn it, start by accepting mine. Because contrary to popular opinion, I'm the head uh. in charge. Come on, let's get something to eat. You really think you're bad, don't you? Welcome back, everybody, to Gundam at MAHQ. This is episode 290. I'm one of your hosts, Chris, and I'm joined by Soulbro. Say hello, Soulbro. Man, oh shit! Is the cake is back, fellas, and so is um, so so is Sergeant Discovery, man. Show over, man. I'll see you guys. Good night. <laughs> okay, good good show. See you later. Peace. Uh, if you're wondering why Neo is not introducing the episode, he's uh, a little bit late, so he's going to join us soon. We have a uh, good episode, a uh, themed podcast, Giant Robot. And uh, before we get to this discussion, we are going to do some Neo's news. And it just so happens that Neo has joined. Holy Welcome shit! Uh, to the show, Neo. <laughs> hey, hey, hold on. While, while yeah, Neo, sorry, be, before Neo speaks, Chris, your mic switched to like a, a speaker mic or something like that. I'm not sure what, but uh, I, if, if if we can hear you just fine, it just sounds like you're on speakerphone. So I don't know if I. Uh... Oh, it was uh, uh, the mic is actually like literally pushed back a little bit on my headset. Oh fuck! Well, well, so it was distant. Oh. it was away from my head. Oh no! Cool. That that works. <laughs> it's, it's nice when the answers are simple. But Neil, welcome, sir. Yeah, welcome. Sorry about that. Um, things just got in the way there. Um, <laughs> just oh, give uh, me a since, second since, here. Since you're coming on board, I already had some uh, some of your news queued up. You want me to just handle that while you get settled in? Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead and do it, Chris. Yeah, that's fine. Because I'm I'm trying to get in up to date on that, and probably I'm sure the people would like to. Here's somebody different for once. So, <laughs> All right, go so I'm going to saunter over to the Larry King Memorial News Desk for some Neo's uh, listener submitted news, which you can always submit more topics in the Le Neo's News listener submission thread in the Gundam section of the Mechatalk forums. So our first one comes from listener MCT Dread, who has a link to crunchyroll.com about how the Gundam Steed Freedom movie is screening in the U.S. in early May, finally, after it's played in so many other parts of the world. So 
Uh, the long and the short of it is that on May 7th, it's going to be screening subbed. And on May 8th, it's going to be dubbed. And I'm presuming that for the returning characters, this is the new dub cast for Right Stuff's redubs of uh, Sea and Destiny HD. Probably not the old cast, because that wouldn't make any sense. So you can get your uh, tickets on Fandango. It's one of those Fathom events. I already have my uh, tickets ordered and I'm going to see it with uh, good old General Hate. So it's oh, going to yes. be a good experience. Oh, yeah. So May 7th and 8th, mark it on your calendars. Our next one also comes from MCT Dread, who um, has a link to KyotoNews.net about uh, the uh, farewell ceremony for the moving Gundam in Yokohama. I watched the uh, live stream of this. It was a very interesting event. You should check it out on YouTube. They had a uh, speech from Tamino was there dressed in a goofy Gundam jacket and with his little g Reco hat that he's been wearing for a couple of years. And they had uh, this really impressive fireworks and uh, illuminated drone light show. So uh, you could see next to the statue the drones um, making up all these images from uh, Mobile Suit Gundam. Uh, Amaru and Char facing off in their pilot suits from the finale. You could see the Zaku. Um, they did the the last shooting, and then uh, they transitioned and did um, the aerial and uh, Miorin and Suleta, and they also showed um, the freedom with Kira and Lacus, you know, while playing songs from uh, those respective shows, and it uh, was really interesting. And they they had Toru Furuya doing uh, the voice of an Amaro AI in the computer and talking about people cooperating to bring peace in the future. And, you know, it was, it was a very nice send off. Although, you know, I thought it curious that they did this on Sunday, March 31st, when uh, at the time we were recording this stream, you know, I don't know what the logistics were there. Well, um, and you forget, you forget, Chris, the, the, uh, the sh did you mention the Shar and Amaro uh, kiss? Uh, yes. That's their thing. Okay, yeah. Yes, that was, they that, did. They that did got have everybody. That. Yeah, everybody's sure did. Disney. Yeah. So next up, we have not one, not two, not three, but four new submissions. Rodimus seventy six. So I'm just gonna run through these real quickly. First up, a Robo Apocalypse news alert: Police robot dog shot during standoff in Massachusetts. That's from <laughs> NBC News. Wow. Uh, next, we have from CBR.com, Transformers and TMNT crossover with Ghostbusters because 80s nostalgia is everything and nothing not? has any meaning. <laughs> why not? Because why not, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, third up, we have from Tformers.com, Transformers, music from the original animated series, vinyl LPs are coming out. Oh, and uh, finally, from GeekTyrant.com, Adam Wingard says his Thundercats movie will 100% honor the 80s series. Man, it's a lot of Thundercats oh, going man. on, man. Um, the comic book just uh, rebooted, so uh, that's super cool. Um, going into uh, the Transformers with Ghostbusters and TMNT, I've never seen them um, cross over with TMNT, but there's a comic book crossover on IDW between... G uh, sorry, uh, uh Ghostbusters and Transformers, uh, and that's been out for a few years, so uh, I think this is uh... <coughs> Ship Yamato Anime 50th Anniversary Project. That's going to be uh, interesting, and I'm sure also weird and existential, and maybe some ennui. It may be disgusting, too. So <laughs> You never know. You never know. Um, that's the end of the submitted topics. I'm going to throw out a couple more. Uh, we got news recently that Kodansha USA has licensed the uh, Mobile Suit Gundam, the Origin, MSD, Kukurus Doan's Island manga. They are not at all the same story, and, and um, this manga is a tie-in with uh, the Mobile Suit Discovery kind of MSV line that was re released alongside the Origin OVA. So I know that sounds very about more officially released Gundam manga in America. Same here. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and, and, you know, just one bit of, um, you know, back padding news uh, this week that we're recording is the 
24th anniversary of MHQ. So, you know, we, we did it for another year, folks. Hell yeah, man. Holy shit. It's been, uh, it's been, it's a quick 24 years, man. So quick. Well, congrats. Sure don't feel like it sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I second that sentiment, but congratulations, man. That's, that's an amazing feat, man. There's a lot of websites. 20, What's that? 24, 24 years and one, one, uh, one uh, unplanned uh, website makeover that was promised it would never happen, but happened. So, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, on the seventh of anniversaries, we have some Gundam anniversaries this month. So, as I mentioned before, we have coming up in a few days the forty-fifth anniversary of Mobile Suit Gundam, and you know I can't remember when the twentieth anniversary was a big deal because that's how old I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Um, we also have the thirtieth anniversary of G Gundam. Wow. And the twenty-something anniversaries also for Wing and X. So congratulations to all of those here. And uh, Solbro, did you uh, want to gas up the um, Straight Talk Express to discuss that topic you mentioned, or leave that for another time? Um, oh, I... hold on, hold on, hold on one second. There's one news article you forgot to do, oh. uh, Chris, on oh, the news listeners. I the think news I know article what it thread. Is. And it's kind of, what a lot of people are saying is uh, uh, early favorite for best picture. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure about uh, it. Bad Boys for Life. The trailer's <laughs> been released. Yes. Yes. They're, they're back. The boys are back. It's not, so, they, yeah. they are indeed. It's not Bad they Boys are. for Life. That movie already came out. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's whatever whatever it, it, it is. Well, whatever the stuff that... Oh, bad Boys... A ri- yeah. for Ride or Die. I think they so, ride or Die. That's they, right. They That's so right. wasted... They wasted that fucking title on the third movie. What were they thinking? Anyway, they didn't think there was going to be a four. four. It should be. <laughs> it should be the. It should be four bad four boys. Yes. <laughs> well, this is because the fourth why? installment in the BBCU, the Bad Boys Cinematic Universe. Well, I'm sure. I'm sure. So. I'm sure Dominic Toretto's going to show up next. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. But. You can cross over to any other franchise when you've got family. Yes, indeed. exactly. Indeed. And you take and you take life a quarter mile at a time. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, thank you, thank you, makes for correcting my my oversight there. No, so, no, um, not not oversight. Just just think just think of me as the striker, you know. Striker. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, well, uh, Solberg, did you want to briefly mention that topic or uh, I, leave it for another time? I will leave it for another time. I, 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 what I will do is I'll point out a few things. Uh, Rodimus76 donated uh, or came up with a lot of the imagery you're going to see tonight. Uh, so shout outs to him. That's Rudy, of course. Um, also, uh, uh, one of our resident news hounds. So, Rudy, as always, man, thank you so much for uh, contributing some of the art for tonight's uh, display for the stream. Uh, if you guys are having any trouble watching on YouTube, you can also go to twitch.tv slash fighters ready, where there's a backup stream there. I will be uploading the local recording for this stream once I'm done. I don't know why I'm having upload issues, but apparently I am. So uh, there's frame rate droppage, but it seems to be holding up at least to some degree. But um, I, on YouTube, I'll upload the uh, unfettered version of the video after the show. So you guys will see that up there. My apologies. Yo, shout out to Rudy. I see you in the chat. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is a little bit of cleanup from last episode. You guys remember we talked about the year 1984 and all the mecha and sci-fi uh, shows, movies, books, and stuff that came out that year. Well, there were two significant ones that we left off the list, and I'm just going to touch upon them real, really quick. Uh, one of them is uh, a favorite of a lot of people because they grew up in the 1980s and saw this show as Saber Rider and the Star Sheriffs. Uh, it's a show called Bismarck, uh, animated series. Uh, it came on in Japan and it came over, came to the United States, I believe, the very next year. Uh, and uh, yeah, um, it was a cool show. I never got the chance to see when I was growing up, but um, I've seen clips ever since. And I, I thought that was uh, cool that it came out in 84. And uh, I know that someone over in Germany is going to have my throat when he finds out we fucking forgot to mention it. So uh, there you go. That's, that's number one. Uh, number two, though, is a little bit more personal. Um, it's a show called Video Warrior Lyserian. Um It came out in, of course, 84. And I've never seen this show at all, but when finding out, uh, thanks to show, by the way, you guys, a lot of you guys know over what we talked about in the episode for Gundam, and um, we were looking at the list, and he noticed that we were missing two animes that were mecha animes that we didn't talk about. Oh, one of them was Bismarck, the other one was this one. And when I pulled up the Wikipedia for this, it looked instantly familiar. I don't know if uh, Enron's watching, but if Enron r- runs this back, about a year ago, he and I were trying to figure out 
what show this was because in 1984, when I was a kid, my dad was stationed in Japan because he was in the Navy. And um, I asked him, like a dumbass, could you please try to find Optimus Prime for me? Not knowing uh, about Diaclone, not knowing about his name being Convoy uh, <laughs> when uh, he was over there. But he said he'd do his best to try to find him. Um, when he got back, uh, he brought back uh, something completely different. And it was a toy based on this show. And I believe I have a picture here. There we go. Um, this is it on eBay, but I had no idea what this shit was in 1984. But I thought it was cool, and I had it for at least a good couple of years. And then, you know, it eventually got destroyed. You know, kids fucked their toys up. But after that, I just continued to wonder, what was this from? And then, just by accident, I stumbled upon it during that night. Uh, and it looks, uh, it's a show that features, uh, it seems like, uh, Studio Perot's attempt at Mobile Suit Gun, not Studio Perot, but the animation studio uh, that worked on this, um, uh, TBS's, uh, or Toei Animation's attempt at Mobile Suit Gundam, it actually features the voices of uh, Toru Furu. I always have a hard time saying his last name, but um, he is the voice, of course, Amaro in uh, Mobile Suit Gundam, and then Keiko Han is the voice of the lead woman in that, and she played uh, Lala Soon in Mobile Suit Gundam, and if you watch the intro, it's very 80s, but very cool looking, so maybe we'll put this in the slate of shows to review in the future, because I love this, I finally love to connect with the actual show side of things and, and complete the circle, so that's what I wanted to bring up, and um, let's see, Yazi says, uh, yes, it came out recently, I believe, it was announced last year, wow, that's cool, it got licensed by Disco Tech, but that's getting picked up, I don't know, um, they license everything, you know, they... You know, if you're if you're waiting for Space Warrior Linguini, they got that one queued up too. Fuck yeah, dude, man! I I definitely want to own this just just to complete the just to finish the fight, as uh, Master Chief would say. But uh, <laughs> just found it to be a little neat thing, um, and uh, that is basically my rant. So uh, thank you guys for entertaining that. Um, it's uh, I've seen this mech in Super Robot Wars Z and such. Mecha San says shout out to Mecha San, uh, and uh, yeah. Um, it's just nice to get in contact with that. Uh, shout out to the show for uh, kind of guiding me along the way. So uh, that's what's up. Back to you guys. Well, thank you for that. And, uh, you know, for, for Stephen, uh, our discussion of 1984 stuff in the year 2024, we totally ripped up off from Retronauts No Shame. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> no, no yeah. shame. Hats just, off. Just adapted for, for Mecha and Sci-Fi. Stolen. Uh, <laughs> yes. You know... It's it's the sincerest form of flattery. So um, we're going to move on to our main discussion right now, which is an interview with Stephen Hero and PMC Trilogy, the hosts of the Giant Robot FM podcast, which you can find on your favorite podcatcher app. And you can also check out their Patreon if you want to sign up for all of the bonuses that comes with uh, supporting their show. So whenever we do an interview with someone, I always like to establish... Uh, Sort of a baseline of, of context so given that we all talk about mecca uh can you both tell us uh what, what's your origin story with mecca anime or mecca in general what what hooked you into uh the franchise well into the genre and uh at, at what age i think pmc and i both have the basic millennial answer and that's gundam wing when we were like in our early teens and then that fandom just morphed from there as we grew older. Um, I know that Gundam Wing was probably the first mech I was exposed to as a, what how old was I? Like around 11, 12 years old. And then from there, I was really captivated by the aesthetics of these giant robots. So I moved on to Ava, which really hit like a, a core aspect of who Steven Hero is at an impressionable young age. So that, that show is like burned into my psyche as part of my marrow um but then i followed like the the like a slate of adult swim and tsunami programming um as it relates to mecca so i watched oh the mess team from there um this also applied to games so i played like front mission zone of the enders i wish i had some really oddball choices to throw y'all's way um <laughs> but i really have like the basic um like suburban teenage answer here there's nothing wrong with coming into it the way you did like you know obviously anime 24 years ago was a very different thing in terms of like discoverability and accessibility steven i'm, I'm curious because I, I i obviously we, we both share wing and that was i think definitely the, the the common point there i so growing up i had a, an older brother so i'm you know i'm a, I'm a, a baby from 1988 
And so my older brother is nine years older than me. And so, of course, what did that mean? That meant I got lots of hand-me-down Transformers, right? There are lots of VHS mm -hmm. cassettes with Transformers lying around. Oh, yeah. Um, so I think between that and then also, uh, and this is something, actually, I'm curious to see if Steven was into this, because I also would have been the right age for that first wave of Power Rangers hitting in, like, 94, 95. Um, and I was super into that. I had all the Zords and everything. And I, maybe I didn't quite identify it as Mecha, but there's certainly a relationship there. I think it's pretty, pretty safe to say. Uh, that, and between those two things, I would say they really primed me for Wing, for, you know, then turning around, getting Xenogears, Armored Core, uh, etc. Yeah, I watched, I didn't watch much Transformers, the, the 80s show, when I was young, like in single digits. I did watch my fair share of Beast Wars, though. But I don't know if that like activated the sicko mecha part of my brain as like a seven year old. <laughs> Beast Wars doesn't activate something. I'm not sure I understand that. See, I mean, I I must have watched the '86 Transformers movie so many times. Like, I, and it's still that's that's one of those films that's that's burned into my brain. Oh yeah, it, 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 I was one of those six year olds who cried in the theater when Optimus died. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> like a like a 9 a.m. matinee on like a rainy day or something. And that that was the real the real theater experience. Yeah, that's one of the few instances where my Orson Welles fandom and my Mecca fandom become conjoined. <laughs> Who would have thought it was such a crossover? Orson Welles. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! So you know, uh, if you know, wing, wing was what drew you both in. What is it that like? Uh, solidified you in in Mecca fandom and, and put you on the trajectory to becoming uh, podcast hosts. You know, what, what was like sort of uh, what really gelled for you about the genre? And it could be, you know, one series or, or a couple of series or games or whatever. It was probably Ava and Xenogears as like a very impressionable 13 year old. But I phased out of anime in my 20s. I was too pretentious for that as like a a film studies major. So I only came back to anime in my later twenties <laughs> and thirties Re really as a That's means funny. to like reconnect with high school friends because PMC and I, you know, went our separate ways in our mid twenties. So we're childhood friends. And then oh. I was really itching for like a way to relive the glory days of just chilling in your friend's basement. So eventually I pitched PMC on a podcast idea and then it morphed from there. The film school yeah. kind of, kind of screwed you up there because it made you, made you think that, um, you know, animated stuff is not as good or, um, you know, as important as other things. <laughs> True. To be fees, which is basically yeah. just another literature class. <laughs> <laughs> With moving pictures. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's funny because it's definitely a big part of it was that, you know, the works like Wing, like Xenogears were sort of things that, um, you know, that, that, I guess did did bring us together and were foundational in the podcast. Like I know for for me, it's weird thinking about because I don't I don't know what kept me coming back to it. Um, this has come up on on the podcast a few times where, like the for example, we just finished Big O two right that, that episode. I literally hit hit upload on that episode like a few hours ago, the final of our Big O two coverage. Oh, and I tasty know tomatoes. The, yeah, just eat, yeah. It was well, the time was right, uh, <laughs> but the. Uh, <laughs> The like I, I know I watched that in like 2011 for for some reason like I, I was you know I was just out of college I was you know I guess making use of, of my my free time and I was going back I watched Zeta for the first time watched Big O2 for the first time and um, and I can't say why I can't say that I you know at that at that point we were I don't know obviously y'all y'all are working on the website but you know i'd have any sort of grand plan to you know get into streaming video games or uploading podcasts or anything uh but yeah i just kept coming back to it you know some of that nostalgia but some of that also that i you know i did find the um you know the material interesting and sort of um like tactile in a way the thing that really i, I talk about interfaces all the time I'm, I'm an engineering guy by by background and i i love that in mecha media even you know the super robot stuff there's always this focus on how the person interacts with it and then how the mecha interacts with its environment um and that's true that's true of battle tech and that's true of uh you know of, of giant robo yeah yeah pmc if you want to impress everyone with your mecha credentials just talk about your extensive reading list of battle tech novels oh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh. 
<laughs> I've been um, so someone, somebody, uh, some some generous listener of our podcast. I should say generous. They really burdened me with knowledge. Pointed out to me that uh, like Catalyst Game Labs had like a huge sale on BattleTech books, and I went and bought like sixty ebooks for like it was like ten or fifteen bucks. And for like a year now, I've probably read twenty or twenty five. I finished one oh last night. I'm gonna start another one tonight. And it's like, <laughs> um, I can't help myself. Yeah, I have a friend who um, he spent the last couple of years going through like thirty plus books or something of Warhammer forty k Horus Heresy, and <laughs> it's like a journey that I never thought that he would complete, and he finally did. And it's like that. You you took on quite a burden there, sir. Oh, I I gotta I gotta say shout outs to uh, Vanguard Bandits. I see Vanguard Bandits from Yazi there in the chat. I I didn't play. That's an Ooh. awesome game, man. For real, man. That's a good one, yeah. So, uh, while we're on the subject of origin points, um, you know, for a reminder to our listeners and you know for our guests, uh, we might as well share ours briefly. So the turbo version of mine was as a small child in the eighties, I was very heavily into the Transformers and to a lesser extent uh, Discount Transformers, a.k.a. GoBots, oh boy. as well as <laughs> Ultron. Then I kind of fell off of that for a while, and in the 90s, I early 90s, I got really into ExoSquad. And I was playing games like Cybernator, a.k.a. Assault Suits Vulcan, mm-hmm. and you know, not really understanding what the anime context of any of that was, which is... Uh, covered in an editorial I wrote on MHQ last year. You can find that on the website. And then once I started really getting into anime, knowing that it was actually anime and from Japan, you know, I dove into stuff like Macross 2, Macross Plus, Evangelion, uh, the MSG movie trilogy, Gundam 0080. And I think those last two are really what helped, like, seal me onto the path that I am still on today. Oh, yeah. So, uh, Neo and uh, Sobro, what uh, what were your origin stories, just to get us all on the same page? Neo, uh, you, you I was go? Go I was I was bitten by a radioactive uh, mecha. Yes, Bro- there radioactive you go. transformer. Stuff. Was yeah. it was it the spider uh, from uh, Wild Wild West? The bitch. <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorite yeah. movies. John Gruber's favorite favorite mecha. Woo! Yeah. Terrible. Uh, PMC, we got to cover that on the podcast. We do. We really like Kevin We've Smith been on. joking about it for years. That's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> I need to no, repost my, that on Mecha Day. It's been like three years since I last posted it. <laughs> yes. No, but <laughs> my, mine's mine's pretty similar uh, as Chris's. You know, kind of growing up in similar age. Um, yeah, Transformers, um, Robotech. Um, you know, I was watching. Uh, lot loved Battle of the Planets. Loved uh, um, yeah, Transor Z and all these old old things that used to show on all those independent stations in South Florida when I lived down there. And I'm old. I could probably, I mean, I wish I had those now. They're probably Gunpla worth some money. Uh, I didn't know what they were at the time. And, um, you know, just kind of got into it. And then, you know, what it happens, Toonami happens. And it sounds like with all of us now, like Gundam Wing is like the gateway drug. Like if you want your friends to get into Mecca, show them Gundam Wing, no matter what age they're from. And uh, yeah, I just kind of went from there, met up with Solbro when I was still living in Florida. And, um, you know, we just started uh, going back and forth on this stuff and then started the podcast. And J- Chris joined us, like, I think two or three episodes later. We thought we were in trouble because we used to rip everything <laughs> off his, off his uh, website. So we thought we were going to get, like, a cease and desist. Like, you guys are you're terrible. We don't watch you. You know, don't do this. And, uh, yeah, so it's been been that way ever since. And, um, yeah, so um, I think... What just attracts me is, you know, of course, just the just the awesomeness of a lot of a giant machinery doing amazing things. But, you know, we've seen that there's been some just great storylines. And, um, you know, um, it, it's nice to see as, as people from our generation seeing that, um, you know, um, anime in general, uh, even mecha anime is so well accepted now. I mean... Um, I, I, I played sports in college and I was like one of the few people that would go to when I was in college, I would go to the, the Japanimation night at the, um, the, the, you know, the school theater and see like Ghost of the Shell and stuff. And now I see like, you know, 
NFL players wearing like <laughs> in the Rudy shirt. So <laughs> it's just a it's a great thing to see. And um, but yeah, that's that's basically where we're at now. And um, yeah, so so bro, man. Um, I'm old as dust. Um, I was born in '77, so uh, my um, I was exposed to anime over in uh, when we lived in um, Puerto Rico in like '79. But my first brush with the mecha anime was '84, uh, much like Chris and Neo. Um, we watched uh, Transor Z, which is Mag Magazor Z, of course. Yeah. Um, of course, uh, Voltron and um, and Mighty Orbots, oh, yeah. which is not technically anime, but it might as well be. Um, and then, of course, the very next year, Robotech aired in 1985. I was eight years old. It changed my life. Um, you know, I, I, of course, uh, abhor Harmony Gold. I got to state that. <laughs> but, uh, but, man, uh, we all do. Between... Is this the ritual, like, two minutes of hate of Harmony Gold? Oh, yes, of course. But, of course. But I'll, I'll, <laughs> I, will, I will postpone that for the time being. Um, I will say that um, I, I grew up with the, the novels and, of course, the anime and the comics and all that stuff. And role-playing games uh a book that i treasure is called robotech art one which is pretty much my bible for um for that series but that book taught me what anime was there's a very important section at the very back that breaks down japanese animation legendary animes that came before macross um you know was crusher joe um uh, of course uh yamato and uh, uh all the other series that uh inspired what we watch today um, and then, of course, coming up in the 90s, uh, mecha anime started leaking to me. I didn't really get into Gundam uh, until I, well, I wouldn't say got into Gundam, but my first brush with it was um, in high school when someone lent me a tape of the first couple episodes of 0083, uh, subtitled. It was, you know, fan sub from Jayco. Um, but then years later, of course, Toonami would air uh, Gundam Wing, and that was definitely a seminal moment. Um, and then right after that, they would air Mobile Suit Gundam, and uh, I'd been dying to see that show for ages. Um, and then shortly after that, Neo, as Neo said, I met Neo, and uh, uh, he's the reason why I got to see Gundam Seed, because he already was uh, collecting the uh, oh, yeah. the old DVDs, and then we started exchanging yeah. uh, our DVD collections. Uh, we started uh, loaning each other our stuff. Oh, and then... well, I, was, I, was, I was watching the Raws first. I downloaded them. The old thing of where you, you would, it oh, sounds yeah. so dated now, and like, <laughs> I'm not, it's funny because we always joke because people are like, oh, it's so much better when you could do all this stuff. And instead of getting like the same day uh, subtitle worldwide release where it was like, mm -hmm. you'd get the raw, you'd hope the raw was there Sunday night mm -hmm. and then you'd watch it and you didn't know what anything was going on because you can't speak the language. And then you're like, okay, okay. And then, you know, maybe the next day or two, you get like one of the first like rough, um, you know, uh, s subtitles, speed subs. yeah, speed oh, yeah. subs and all that. So, and then you, and then sometimes you get shit out of luck because one of them would go out a bit. You know, they'd stop doing it or something like that. Oh, but yeah. yeah, it's yeah. I definitely we we are we are not of those people. It's like, oh yeah, when it was such a horrible thing to get any of this crap. No, I I enjoy it now. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> That was so crazy. That was dedication there. I look back. I'm like, why, man? I sat there and I watched that shit when it was. I didn't even know what they were saying. <laughs> Raw dog, man. We all yeah. did it, man, because you didn't know when the sub was coming yeah. out. You didn't, but uh, yeah. that's that's how far we've come. That's how we've come a long way from yeah. bootleg tapes to taping off a of television to the DVDs and uh, lucky for those who are lucky enough to have laser disc. Holy shit, man! I wish I had a player back in the day. But uh, yeah, man, that's that's my story in brief. Of how I got into mecha anime, I, I'm pretty much. All right. Uh, it's my favorite genre of uh, anime, or and might be of all time to be honest. <laughs> in the chat, Fred uh, says, "Nah, nothing touches the feeling of downloading RAWs and figure out how to apply SRT files to play alongside the video." Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. The the hunt for SRT files to apply to RAW was definitely yeah. something back in those days. And what was the other thing where you have to go get like the the what was that old video or that old video player that you would have to find? Not the VLC, Real. but the other. Yeah. Oh, Real like player. Some oh, of them were no. Yeah, players. they weren't encoded. Oh. You're like, oh crap, I gotta find the real player and then you're like oh Jenny's i need the player. codex yeah i need the codex <laughs> <laughs> like you're searching online life for the codex but yeah oh jesus Man. so uh in terms of podcasting you know we've obviously been uh yammering on since 2007 but mm -hmm. for emc and steven what made you all want to turn your interest into mecha anime into a mecha podcast Good question. So in addition, so originally there was a period in my life where um, you name drop Retronauts before. Retronauts is one of my favorite podcasts. I've been listening since 2006, since the one-up days. 
in addition to Retronauts, there were like three to five other podcasts I would religiously listen to, you know, weekly um, for about like three years. And the idea of a podcast kept percolating in my mind. So, you know, how people like make up fake band names with no intention of actually starting the band, but they like to start, you know, come up with names. I would come yes. up with fun names for podcast. And I thought I hit gold. I was walking through a park one day. I thought I hit gold because I came up with Just Communicating as a Gundam Wing podcast, oh. and which is still a <laughs> banger good. name. It's good. Yeah, um, that is good. I, I do like that. And anyone could take it. I've been uh, talking about Just Communicating since we started podcasting. And there is a, more so than any other Gundam show, even like the Tomino UC stuff, there have been more podcasts dedicated to discussing Gundam Wing on an episode-by-episode -episode basis than anything else. I, I kept like a, like a running count. for. Uh, I've lost count recently, but there was, there's probably at least two dozen podcasts dedicated to Gundam Wing over the last 12 years. Wow. Yeah, it's like the god. It's like the Godfather of Mecca. I mean, <laughs> like the Godfather movie. It's the same one. Like everybody loves this thing. I mean, yeah. Um, yeah. It speaks to its entrenched position in American fandom, yeah. at least for like yeah. millennials and above. Yes. Yeah, yeah it does. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it really does. I know so. we we covered it twice on the show. I, uh, the first time we did it was part of the Gundam Roundup way back in the early episodes of the series, and then um, I rewatched it like two years ago. Yeah, like, but then oh, you you and I it. you and I rewatched it together on yeah, stream yeah, live, we were at, yeah, and then stream, too, and then yeah. I believe we did a revisit. It was during the time that Chris was uh, away from the show. We revisited Gundam Wing and talked about it again yeah. on the podcast. So we covered at least twice on this. But yeah, can't get away from it. And man. I did a full re-review of the entire series. Yeah. Uh, probably about a decade ago. So. I mean, it's, it's a, a lot solid, of inspiration by a lot of people. It's a solid show. I mean, it, it's got it. It's it's full of tropes and all these oh, other boy, things, and <laughs> parts of it can be kind of cheesy and weird and dumb. But I mean, it, it, it's straight up entertainment. Like I always felt entertained. <laughs> Space well. Queen Emily once said on Twitter, "I'll never forget this. Uh, she's completely right." That Gundam, if Gun, if Gundam Wing were as good, I do too. Well, I I, I, I think all of would. Would Gundam sure. Wing be a good, real, you know, uh, live action anime series to adapt? I mean, I, I feel in some ways, if you're going to do any of the Gundam shows, that might be the best one that might have the most cross market appeal. I mean, you're always going to get like with the, the UC stuff, the true like, you know, war people and strategy people and stuff like that. But I honestly think if you did a live action, Gundam Wing in the spirit of the show. I think it would be pretty pretty damn popular. <laughs> it could make a banger like CW show. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, you you could, yeah. You, you yeah. get you get some Korean you get series some, with a K pop band. You is, get a K pop uh, band. Is, that's what I was talking about right there. Yes. Yes. <laughs> License to bring money. <laughs> hey, I'll watch it. <laughs> you know, you look back at Wing and it's funny that like uh Bandai stumbled upon such a huge hit with Wing all the way back in, in the year 2000 because it's, you know, this year is also the last month was the 24th anniversary of the, the debut of Wing in America and they had no idea what they had on their hands because, you know, I remember they were out there releasing at literally the same time as Wing um, the Dreamcast game Rise from the Ashes, you know, the one year oh, side oh, story. Yep. And I remember people on forums being like what the fuck is a zaku what is zeon where's hero in this game where's <laughs> duo i don't know what the federation is and it's just like that's i'm going which should have been x they're like oh let's do msg because msg is big in japan so it should be big here too yeah it's like oh man you guys you messed it up just as you were making a strong start out of the gate it took a while to figure it really out. is so weird to think about those two things arriving at the same time because i've gone back and played that dreamcast game since I, i've i've done some speed runs of it and it's like it's a neat thing but like yeah not not the thing to have more in there it's like that is not the stuff to get into um and like honestly great. you know they had on the super super famicom at the time of wings release there was a game called a uh, fighting game called endless duel Mm -hmm. that uh, became very popular in, in emulation circles and of course it's been fan translated and it's like you could have done a very quick and dirty port of that to PlayStation 1 
and and gotten some decent cash. But uh, uh, Federation versus Zeon DX, did that come out here in the states on the Dreamcast? I think on PS2. PS2. On PS2. Yeah. Uh, we'll get a nicer looking one. Yeah, much very much so. Wow. Uh, oh. Come on, wait, wait. You, you hate that all the things that were established in season one were just thrown out out in the window. It's like they're they're not gonna fly. They can't fly. And everybody. Home style fights too. Oh let's god. just do seed and have things flying around shooting at each other over the ocean. Oh my god. Yeah, <laughs> it's That's bad. What but, a mess. Yeah. I see Ethan in chat um bringing up uh, Genlock which we did cover. I always forget we've co we cover Genlock. We covered the first season of Genlock maybe 4 years ago on our old podcast and that's a memory hole I completely forgot existed. Which is uh which is something we should definitely check out cuz I know that Rooster Teeth just recently uh it, Got the uh, got the axe. Thank you, David Zaslav, you piece of shit. But um, <laughs> but yeah, um, uh, Genlock, I've, I've been wanting to check it out because I, I know the, the the talent involved. Uh, did you guys enjoy it or was it terrible? The first season is fine. Uh, I think you know if you're there for the talent, you're gonna get some good performances and some fun stuff from you know from Michael B. Jordan and company. Mm -hmm. I've I've heard that season two is terrible i only oh. watched a video on season two i've never watched season two myself same is not that the worst though i don't know how many shows that we've been through it's like season one is great and then season two is just such garbage it, i don't know what happens after that at that point so i i can tell you why that happens most of the time is that they don't have the ending figured out <laughs> when they start the show yeah or they yeah they i think oh, they they, they did there. but then they threw it out in the case of uh yes. r2 which oh my you know God. we know was originally supposed to pick up right where season one left off and then they moved to this uh different more uh kid-friendly time slot and sunrise was like no let's let's kid this up and add like really garish mecha designs and let's you know toss out that entire story you had in in mind tanaguchi yeah, I, I I often put um, when I've had people ask me about Code Geass, I Chris, remember years ago you told me, remember the show Heroes that was on TV, and you oh, told yeah. me just watch mm -hmm. season one and mm. don't go beyond watch that. One of the best first That's what I kind of tell them with Go Code Geass. It's like just watch season one and don't watch any of the other stuff after <laughs> that because it's a giant mess. It's like yeah, I know you're probably gonna be at the end. It's like okay, kind of kind of what happens, but you don't want to be disappointed because. It was really good. I think, I mean, season one was when we, that's the early stages of Gundam. I remember we were around that time. And I mean, it was a outstanding show. And I thought, I mean, even now, I think it's like if Mr. HBO wanted a show like that, um, I would say <laughs> TV feel, it would totally work on something like HBO. I think it would. Yeah. Because if, if you have that grounded in reality type of, of Mecca, I think, I mean, it, I've always thought that would be a, a good one. But. You know, for all of its many faults, and, and R2 does have many faults, it has its moments, and I still like it more than Akito the Exile, which is just, oh god, uh, to me, an incomprehensible mess just full of unnecessary characters and unnecessary things, and just like, why why did this thing happen? And what was Other it, than three? giving us creepy spider mecha. And what was it like? Three years of watching, of trying to get the, to watch four episodes or something like that. It was I don't know if it was that long, but yeah, it, it took forever. Like yeah, I mean, it was like, ugh. yeah, I, I I enjoyed Akito the Exile so much that I reviewed the first episode in 2012, and I still haven't finished. I should say I haven't seen any of the OVAs. Like I haven't seen Akito. I haven't seen the Nunnally Alice in Wonderland OVA. I haven't seen Resurrection. I do intend to watch Resurrection. I'm probably before the new show starts. I think it's what now it's airing on Disney Plus. I yes. think I'm going to. Yeah, I have I have the Blu-ray that's a super out of print of the compilation films, and uh, instead of selling that for like and pay my mortgage, I think I'm just going to watch the compilation films, <laughs> and watch Resurrection, and then jump into whatever it's called not see the recapture whatever it's been renamed rose of the recapture Ro rose. Yeah. There you go. Oh, Jesus. Che chief wine of the recapture yes. <laughs> resurrection wasn't I'm, I'm hor just... wasn't horrible but it wasn't good and not only yeah that one was just like okay whatever you know um 
it those is little one shot OVAs, they're kind of just inconsequential fluff. They don't really, yeah. you know, they, there's there's no harm that comes from watching them or not watching them. Um, yeah, yeah. I thought Resurrection was enjoyable, and it, it kind of uh, made up for for some of R 2s uh, mistakes Stupid and nice. and yeah. you know undeserved endings that I did not enjoy. So, you know, it's it's an experience, and um, you know, it's it's um, like a lot of long running series. Like sometimes you just want to like immerse yourself back in that world of something that you enjoyed and you're remembering more the thing that you enjoyed than like the current product that you're consuming so it kind of falls into that mold yeah if i had to pick on what's probably like because we've generally been fortunate in that we've chosen to cover good things on Jarrett robot fm um, if I had to pick a, a worse a worse one, it's probably um, and I, I apologize if Zapislave is still in chat because he had asked us to look into this. Oh. It's probably MS Igloo. We covered the first volume of it, uh, and that uh, was um, Nazis. yeah. It just they they really didn't want to talk about the war crimes that were going on just over there. Hell yeah, um, <laughs> fucking awful. Weird, right? <laughs> My apologies, uh, Zappa. <laughs> are you excited about the Netflix? Uh, um, I, I guess it's uh, somewhat in line. Okay, it, 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 it basically is Igloo 3. Um, yeah, but I just saw the, the recent trailer for that, and it, it looks it's cool, but people are like bitching about it already. So uh, it's going to be a mixed bag. I know when it hits, huh? but uh, uh, hopefully it's it's a little bit better than Igloo. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, as a as a gun tank fanatic, I hate the hood. Oh, way better than gun tank. I'll tell you, well, wow. Who are you? How dare you, man? The original <laughs> gun tank, RX seventy seven. Man, do we do? All right, do we know about the most ridiculous hold offer fact? The the thing that has to do with Code Fairy. Are oh. we aware of this? Oh, enlighten us, please. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, all right. I'm, uh, I'm sorry. That ruined me. Was... Yes, it's it's weird. It is definitely weird. Yo, yo, yo Ed in the chat saying gun tank, gun tank gang rise up. <laughs> yeah, man. Yes. Why why so would you not the, be in a brightly colored half tank um, you know, half mobile suit thing that's got a canopy roof? I mean, that makes yo, perfect sense in a battle. Yo, I'll, I'll, I'll call my boy Norris the uh the the county <laughs> Hey, and when he was in space, that oh. to tell me that was not the best part. I mean, sometimes I I know those uh, compilation movies; people love them, but mm -hmm. you know the fact that I miss Gun Tank in space that kind of bugs me. Yeah, it, uh, it bugs me. It's a shame. I know that out of uh, the Gun Band team that I played Code Fairy, but PMC, do you do you want to relate to us the the sad sad story of the Adolfer in Code Fairy? Yeah, so. You know, a big part of a lot of the Igloo stories, and of course it's true in that one as well, is that you have somebody who's like really good at something, but it's not mobile suits. And turns right. out it's Gundam, <laughs> so mobile suits are important. Mm -hmm. And so the, the Haldolfer pilot, you know, heroically goes down in, in flames after, you know, taking out a squad of stolen Zakus. And, uh, you know, and I, I think they kind of have to, I forget if they, they bail or something. I have not actually played Code Fairy, so I have only read about this other part of it, which is that, the the code fairy team apparently uh, shows up and gives this guy a, a proper a proper big a big quotation marks on that burial at some point and oh, that's God. just <laughs> like please please don't not let, exactly please don't let the code sort fairy of team reinter me <laughs> so what happens is um, you know the code fairy gets to, like level up their equipment because um, you know they they all start off um, kind of just using goose and one of your team members is this you know, buxom teenage lass with glasses, and, you know, she's, she's that character. And uh, she's just a big old mecha nerd, and she is piloting a, I believe, a dome tropical test type, and she wants it. And she has done some research and has uh, located the remains of the Hildolfer where it was destroyed. So she wants to go out on a mission to retrieve it's canon, which she does, and then attaches it to some, like, hover booster system of something else to then make kind of, like, sort of a, a, a ground-based version of Seed's meteor that she attaches to the back of um, her dome that kind of is like a big butt with a cannon on it. Oh, God. <laughs> and, and I think they did kind of, like, have a little scene at the end of that mission because that mission involves you getting 
attacked by two um, Pale Rider variants because, of course, we need to have even more Pale Riders. <laughs> And after the end of that mission, it's like, oh, I'm so sad that this guy died, but thank you, sir, for the cannon. Yeah, that yeah, was a true, I mean, true story. I, I knew that going into the podcast record, but like we, we me and the guest intentionally concealed it from Steven. <laughs> so oh, wow. Steven had to react live. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, was, it was quite shocking. Imagine being like imagine in a questionable Gundam game. <laughs> yes. Full of you know a bunch of you know weird sicko teams and uh, war crimes teams and it's it's a really weird game. I mean I enjoy it, but like that story goes to some funky places at times. Uh, and the chat Mechasan, uh, yes, he notes it's uh, a Gallup hover system. So yes, it's the Gallup hover system with oh, the Dolphin awesome. cannon and I think a bunch of missile launchers and like heat hawks strapped to the side and then it's attached to the back of uh, Mia's uh, dome tropical test type and they she calls it the dome nomides there's definitely a part of me that wants to play that because like I I've speed run a, a handful of uh, all you know Gundam games from like PS2 era and it would be funny to, to try something else with that. I don't know. I, I have no experience at all with uh, you know with battle operation stuff or adjacent stuff. So I don't know how well that would it would stand up to that kind of stress. But uh, I, I do think about it once in a while. It's a fun game for what it is, especially since it's a single player game carved out of a multiplayer game. So it has some of those elements. But you know what was interesting to me about it was it's the first like narrative Gundam game that we've had in so many years because uh, yeah. we used to get those all the time and Bandai just kind of gave up on those. Like, you know, I was a uh, big fan in the PS3 generation of uh, uh, MS Battlefield Record 0081. Did you all ever play that one? I played a little bit. Actually, shout outs to uh, Tom Asimov literally mailed me a copy of it because he just oh. had spares. <laughs> nice. Oh, that's awesome. And the game was pretty cheap at one point because yeah. it was on PS3 the best. Mm -hmm. yeah, that was a fun game, and then, you know, it just, they, they stopped doing that kind of game, and it's like, you know, here you go, here's Versus, and here's an arcade experience, or here's an MMO-type game, and, you know, we, we don't do the Gundam narrative single-player games anymore, so that that's kind of what drew me to Code Fury, as, uh, as odd as some of it was. Yeah, same. No, no, I definitely, I, I, it's the same thoughts. I was like, oh, a single player experience. Okay, sure. I mean, I guess, I guess the only other one is that we've really had recently was um, the the SD Gundam game, right? I mean, did a oh, yeah, unicorn, unicorn game yeah. adapted the first three OV episodes. I never played it, but I knew that's one of the last uh, before Code Fairy of those narrative single player Gundam games. We streamed that PMC. Yeah, we streamed it was like boring. the first hour of that. Soft games, uh, that was really dry. Run as well, in addition to doing the podcast. Um, if you want to tell the audience about your stream really quickly. Sure, yeah, thank you. Um, so, I, you know, besides the podcast, I've also been streaming, uh, you know, kind of on and off uh, since uh, since 2016. A lot of it being involved in... Hmm? All right, I thought you said something, Chris. No, no, I didn't. Oh, go for it, go for okay. it. Um, so, I, I, yeah, I've been streaming on off uh, since 2016. Uh, a lot of it being spear on content, a lot of you know other kind of older game stuff, and a lot of it. I have done a bunch of of mecha games, you know, spear on armor core, Gundam games, uh, Shogo Mobile Armor Division, you know, the Ooh. the PC first person shooter. Wow. Um, I've taken a few that's, of those to uh, yeah, that's a fun game. Yeah, I took a few of those to to GDQ events, uh, which has been fun. Like did Shogo at TwitchCon 2019, like in, in front of an audience, and then. Uh, Armored Core. I also was the the first Armored Core runner, and then I was on you know commentary for Armored Core Six um, this this past summer. Um, so yeah, I mean, and then of course you know occasionally you know Stephen will will either virtually or physically stop by, and uh, you know we'll we'll, uh, we'll we'll do some streams, some giant robot FM streaming as well. Nice. Well, what's the, what's the URL for your stream? Uh, it's just my username, uh, twitch.tv slash PMC Trilogy. If you're, if you're watching the video, it's on the screen right now. Oh, I didn't know you had it up. Okay, cool shit. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Yes, it is. <laughs> and, um, yeah, um, if anything, I, 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 I'm going to subscribe as well. Uh, have you ever played uh, Super Robot Wars on stream? We, we announced this just recently, but uh, we're going to be covering the uh, original generation OVA on the podcast in the summer. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do mid-generations. Yeah, 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 that's exactly right, yeah. 
I can't remember. It's so good. And, mm-hmm. and it has one, but nobody wants to translate out play through it in English. So uh, that's the one. That's the, the holy grail I love to play through. And I still have to finish T, and 30 came out not long ago, so, and whatnot. But uh, yeah, man. Making my debut on Giant Robot FM to talk about uh, an episode comes out. Yo, that's awesome. Oh, wow. Looking forward to that. It's a little, it's a little outside my uh, my wheelhouse. Uh, not that I don't know uh, a decent amount of Super Robot Wars, just from you know having anime. But it's it's nice to. <laughs> <laughs> no, we appreciate it. It was kind of hard to. I'm not immersed in the Super Robot Wars community, so I was. I... Damn, is like you would think, Chris. Like two thirds of us are not that much into <laughs> Super Robot Wars, especially Chris. <laughs> not know that way. It's 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 a little surprising. Yeah, Sobro's Sobro's best. Basically, the SME on a Super Roll <laughs> or on this. On the- MHQ is the time I might otherwise have to play these games. So, you know, there's, yeah. a, there's a trade-off. There's a, there's a magic to the series, though, especially when you when they actually take the time to rewrite uh, plot lines for shows that were shit. <laughs> and, turn like them, and turn them into gold, like Destiny, absolutely. Or figure out a way to weave the, the, the variant storylines from the different shows together. Is is some slick stuff. So uh, I really appreciate it. I I have a lot of respect for those who translate the games officially and unofficially. Shout out to Zappa Slave in the chat who wrote that um uh, they worked on uh, the Dreamcast version of Alpha. Uh, some of the menus were done, a few stages, but it was never finished. Damn, I I know where to find them online. But yeah, the the Alpha version of um of uh, Super Robot Wars on the PlayStation and the Dreamcast. Uh, for some reason on that site are not there uh if someone wants to um hit me up uh, with the dm over on twitter um my so my uh user tag is uh sober Ryu. so uh if you want to let me know where i can find it please do because i would love to go through alpha sometime but back to you guys so why don't you tell us uh folks a little bit about uh, both the patreon and these uh fanzine project that you're embarking on emc you want to hit him with the pascal elements uh, one of them is the patron exclusive discord which uh you know chris is in shout out to chris thank you for the uh, support being in there and then um and then the biggest thing is probably uh one of the two big things one is the the bonus podcast series twice a month we're doing a uh, single episode of turn a gundam we call it a series we call moon race wireless and that's been a lot of fun we're about 20 episodes into that so you know we've been doing it for for a hot minute now um, if anyone wants to listen to them, the first four episodes are available for free. They're over on the main feed, so you can you know check it out if you like it, and you, you can sign up for five dollars and you know instantly get like fifteen more episodes. Uh, so that's uh, that's that's been one of the- uh, one of your turning episodes. We had him on the show once to talk about turning. That was a great conversation. That man oh. is like such an amazing me. font of turning knowledge, but Boy. also like love and appreciation. Yeah, absolutely. We've had Fees on multiple episodes. Like Fees is basically the third co-host of the Moon Race Wireless. <laughs> in, in fact, like we we're recording on Sunday with them. Yeah, we're recording Sunday with Fees. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If if Mark Simmons wasn't already like the Mark Simmons of Turn A Gundam, then Fees would be the Mark Simmons of Turn A Gundam. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Mark Simmons. Also, we had Mark Simmons on for a, a couple of episodes, and tremendous, just wonderful to talk to. Oh, very yeah, fun. He's a great guy. Very fun, like, when we're not recording, too, because when we were introduced for the first time, he drew, like, a little doodle of PMC and an I. Very, uh, very endearing. That is awesome. Well, yeah, so with the with the Patreon, we had, we had um, when we started out, our first thing was doing these extra um, episodes covering sort of production history in reaction to uh, Mecha video games. And we did that for, for about, you know, the first two years of Giant Robot FM, uh, a lot of those episodes are now available, so if you, you're like, "Hey, I want to listen to people talk about the history of the first Armored Core for two hours or something," you can you can find those episodes in the main feed. Um, but like, ultimately, it just kind of became too time consuming to do like three podcast tracks at the same time. Um, yeah, and we had been looking for a way for for Steven to sort of repackage and uh, you know kind of really turn into something you can you can grab onto uh, with uh, with like a, the the you know with his research for the history episodes that we do for our coverage uh, and so i mean steven you want you want to take it away because i feel like you're the person to talk about the zine part of the patreon 
Yeah, so if you have never listened to a Giant Robot episode, Giant Robot FM episode before, not to toot my own horn, but I would recommend you check out our history episodes first, or at least one history episode to get like um, acquainted with what we do. They are very extensive, multi-hour deep dives into the production history of whatever show we're about to cover. Um, and usually the notes on those shows are upwards of, usually between 5,000 and 8,000 words long. So what I've done is... I wanted to repurpose these notes into something a bit more academic with proper work cited, uh, annotated bibliography, and images to go along with the, the text um, to really tell a very vivid story. So that's essentially what we're doing with the zine. And we had some great, we've gotten some great help from Sundown McMoon in chat, Ethan Hawker, who's a frequent guest at Sing. I'm really impressed. I'm looking at a copy of the, uh, the proof I got in the mail. I'm very impressed with the zine um, because I'm very much an amateur at this. That's outstanding, man. Is there any images of it online? Uh, if, if you have a link, I'll pull, it, I'll pull it up on screen. Totally. Let's see. I think I last posted on Twitter. I will go there. Let's see. Yeah, on the subject of those history yeah. episodes, uh, shout out to the episode y'all did about uh, Yaz. That was a really good deep dive into his career and um, his interests. And uh, I would highly recommend anyone go visit, go uh subscribe and listen to that episode because it's a uh, it's a great uh, exploration of someone who's such a key figure in anime history yeah we had uh, we had megan d uh, aka brainchild 129 on for for a, for a lot of that because you know, that was leading into the um i think we we did like your know, reviews of the the origin uh, uh at ova um and she was invaluable throughout that whole thing yeah i'm uh, revisiting that content because uh you know one thing that I started doing the last few years is since I spent so much time working on MHQ content, um, to kind of get me jazzed up in the mood, I listen to Mecha podcasts. So most often I'm alternating either between our friends, uh, Mechanista in G or your show. Oh, I'm Thank glad you. to hear that. All right. Do we, Neil, I'm uh, sorry, Chris. I'm I'm here. All right, I'm, I think I'm still here. All right, cool. All right. I thought I thought, I thought, I thought that we lost somebody. Oh shit! It sounded like objects or upcoming episodes. I know you just. Maybe. One oh, thing on, we, can, we can tease is that a, uh, I mean, it's, it's a little outside of the wheelhouse of, of mecha anime, but I think it's quite adjacent. Is that our, our next main feed coverage is going to be uh, on the on the movie Robot Jocks, the classic oh, yes! you know, live action. Oh <laughs> shit! Yo. So. I forget the line yeah, look, that movie ends forward. with. Oh my god, that movie is so <laughs> bad. It's good. Uh, we can, we can. I forget. The, there's a line at the end of that movie before they have the hardest handshake of all time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I said, we can do something. Uh, the chat will let me know. I, I, have to, I have to quote it before we're done. I need to close out the stream with it, but that's for another time. But uh, yeah, that's, that movie is ridiculous. We can live. Thank you, Dalo. We can live. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant yeah, so that's gonna. I mean, we're gonna get into the, you know, the 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 career of Stuart Gordon, and then you know, go into the production history of the movie, and then of course talk about the movie itself. So it should be a real, a very very raucous time. I'm tuning into that. I got to man. I got to hear what you guys have to say about that and learn about the uh, background of the film. So that's that's amazing. Yeah, we're gonna split the history coverage into two parts. I'm actually starting early next week on what's going to be like a month and a half worth of research. Um, we're going to focus on Stuart Gordon's early career. A lot of that episode is going to be about his time as a theater director in Chicago. We're going to cover his filmography up until Robot Jock. So we're going to talk about Reanimator. The other thing he did after Reanimator, which I haven't watched yet, the follow-up episode will be focused on the production history of the film, which there's a lot of resources for me to comb through because that Blu-ray is stacked with extras. And that's when note-taking becomes very laborious because like, listening to the three separate commentary tracks and like writing down fun tidbits mm -hmm. takes a, quite a bit of time. Oh, yeah, they enjoyed <laughs> that movie three times in a row. That's amazing. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. I'm, I, I know that movie since his... Since I was a kid. Yeah. I know the handshake you speak of. I've seen that meme, but oh, I am goodness. completely in the dark. Oh, I'm sorry. I ruined anything for you. I'm so <laughs> not, oh, don't worry. Don't worry. Quite. Yeah, don't worry. People people have already told us about important stuff. Like, oh. I think we already know about the chainsaw dick, so. Yes. It is so, it's so bad, but it's so amazing, man. I, <laughs> I am, I'm legit excited for you. I can't wait to hear what you guys take us on it, man. That's, that's fantastic. 
Stuart Gordon, I mean this with all the admiration in the world, is such Hell a pervert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of directors who are. Yeah. He knows it. You know, those memes about, like, um, you know, like, you watch a show and it's like, what uh, barely contained fetish of the writer will we be exploring this week? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good way to put it. Yeah, yeah the, the author's barely disguised fetish, a classic in literature and film. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, I'm thinking, you know, we, we probably need to do a, a dive into more live action uh, mecha movies because, you know, there's stuff floating around out there that like that, Unhead or, um, you know, it's just just a lot of stuff out there that uh, that we could dive into and explore and have some some fun with, whether it's terrible or not. True, true. Um, I know that uh, the only ones that we've done here on the show is uh, G-Savior and both uh, Pacific Rims. So, uh, yeah, that's 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 we're, we're, we're awful light on that subject. We need to do more of those but there's not that many to go around so we have to really hunt them down but um yeah robot jocks is definitely on the list like a month's or two months worth of coverage and then patrons vote on what we want to cover so everything is like of a similar caliber type of thing so that month the, the month of may was dedicated to or will be dedicated to live action mecha movies robot jocks won in live action film brave storm never heard of that one i think it's brave storm zappa yes Rap Zappa mentioned it. He's the one who voted it in. Oh. I know we've talked about Robot Jock so many times, but we've never even talked. We've never even reviewed it. So I'm already writing it down. Bring yeah, there's some stuff that we've like talked. We've yeah. talked around a lot, but never actually like covered in depth. And that that's that's one well, of those I mean, things. Now's your time to to do an in depth dive on Wild Wild West. Oh my God. Man. <laughs> I, I know of the infamy of uh, the spider from listening to uh, Kevin Smith on his podcasts. I know the infamy of that movie that, uh, what's his name, turned it down. He turned down The Matrix to do that movie. So. <laughs> Who? Oh, Will Smith. Um, Will Smith. Did. Will Smith. Yeah. He turned down The Matrix to do Fam that? Or was he supposed to be Morpheus? Yes. No. Oh. No, I thought it was his career, but you know. <laughs> I'm not kidding the concept. I know. It, all, all he is to me is Mike Lowry. And as long as he can do that well, I'm good with that. It doesn't need to be anything else. So. Only thing he needs a pilot so, uh, is his Lambo. Nikos. <laughs> Go ahead, Chris. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Neo Sobro, any uh, additional questions for our guests? Um, I, I've got to ask. Uh, Before we start winding down. Going back to the worst anime uh, situation, um, two questions. Number one. Have you ever seen MD Geist? And if so... <laughs> I've had Mutual's um, tweet about MD Geist. Mm -hmm. um, shout outs to Russell Latshaw, I believe. And I, I, others. <laughs> um, actually, actually, you should watch the follow-up. MD Geist colon Death Force. Colon! That's, um, <laughs> yeah. And there's that. I've, uh, it's, it's so I bad. still need to post some of those designs on Mecha Day. They haven't actually made it. Uh, three years I've been running the account. I don't think a design from MD Geist has shown up yet. Awesome. Um, so do you all know the, the story of the um, MD Geist as the company spokesmecha for um, Central Park, Park Media? Media? Yeah. Oh, I think I've heard of that, yeah. CHS boxes of Central Park Media. Central Park Media was absolutely... This is the actual language they use, whatever. So, you know, if y'all... And read whatever terrible description is on the back there. Oh, totally. That's uh, I always enjoy that. Sometimes the back of the box summaries are whack, and it's really fun. The dissonance it produces from a modern day like perspective. Uh, big O two, I should say. Uh, did you find it to be as uh, engaging as part one, or did you find it to be uh, um, uh, the law of diminishing returns with uh... guys? I had never seen it, mm -hmm. and I feel like it is unfairly maligned by yeah. a lot of the fandom. I feel like the fandom hasn't seen it since two thousand. The ending. Um, it doesn't really see how it kind of gives the middle finger to fans who want answers, because that's not really the point of the show. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it really works like on a metatextual level, like reflecting on the process of like making a show, which I thought was cool. Very true. Uh, and city, you know, at least in some of the concept for it, at least when the when the series uh, starts to unfold its mystery and all that stuff too. And uh, be, seeing Dark City and then watching that that show in particular. I, I just found that there was commonality between them that had uh, ISD and internet because I didn't have internet at home at the time. Um, I used to go to Sunrise's Japanese website a lot back then. And then one day they just put on um, 
a page for the Big O, and I was mind blown uh, seeing the ads for it. And of course, a couple years later, it would show up on uh, Toonami with those uh, fantastic Peter Cullen uh, uh, promos. I don't know if you've ever seen those, but those are incredible. Oh, hell yeah. Oh my god, they're amazing. The vibe? Yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic show. Yeah, I think show. for against it the most is... I got used to it. None of the mech battles reached the peaks of season one because yeah. there's a real tangible quality to cell animation, which did you pay? Uh, season two is that um, legendary voice actor. He did the voice for those really cool. But um, what were you going to say, Chris? He leaned into it. I think there were some really impressive, but there were some really embarrassing ones as well. I think for whatever reason, the, in the final moments of the of the final episode, they like pop to a representation of the, the season. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever heard of um, the series called Lost Universe? I have not. Are there mechs in it? I could post on Mecha Day. <laughs> heard of that old mm -hmm. fantasy yeah, series? Player, yeah. yeah, yeah. And th there's some like light connections between the continuity of the two. But anyway, Lost that there are there's some animation that looks like hentai DVD level of oh, like no. drawings kind of like sliding across the screen at like a few frames per second like randomly intercut like in between shots and it's like what is going on here like this is so terrible and it's like it's really bad it's like this is yeah maybe you should have held, held off um i recently because you know i've been on this battle tech kick forever and once in a while i'll pull up the the opening for the battle tech animated show uh which has like some maybe you shouldn't have drawn that in cg like that that early <laughs> Yeah, like we were talking about before the show, the um, the CG sequence in the 1980s GoGo 13 movie, like, that mm. just should not have been done. Like, if you look it up on YouTube, it's like, this is really bad. And especially the fact that it's intercut with traditional animation, it's like, just just do it the normal way. Like, don't do not do this. Um, Yahtzee mentions in the chat, like, yes, uh, Lost Universe was uh, part of the early incarnation of MHQ that we, when we called it FAHQ back in the day. So if you go far enough back in the internet archive, you might be able to find my reviews where I never finished the series, but it's, it was a very weird series. And if you find some clips on YouTube, you can, you can just see how horrid the animation is sometimes for yourself. Oh, it's, it's definitely some of the worst I've seen of the, of the digi paint era. Man, um, I think one of you, I forget who was mentioning it, but, um, you know, when you watch, when you hear about shows that you hadn't seen, like you've heard like the fandom talk about them, is there a lot, that, you know, do you often find that you're kind of off of what the fandom's saying? Like a lot of times people, like you just, I think somebody said that Big O.C. for the sake of being it, but you just are like, wait, I don't understand what all the issue is and why people are just continuously hating on stuff so much. I'm a G savior defender, so I will oh, yeah. fight to the death. Anyone? I the, and the a power, the power of bioluminescence. Yes. <laughs> I was gonna say, I feel like in particular, if, there, if there's like a thing, you know, you, you mentioned the idea of like, you know, coming to media after the fact and saying like, what, 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 what like, why was there, why was there such a, a an uproar over this? And I, I think it sounds like a yeah. thing with Big O too. That's that's certainly applicable. If I had to single out, frankly, say morons on YouTube, mm -hmm. uh, it would be Gundam 0079, The War for Earth, the uh, the Presto Studios made FMV game. <laughs> DMC's coming for blood today. But I mean, it it is. I think for what it is, like it, 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 all the FMV games are like that. Like yes. it, it is definitely representative of the period. Presto Studios made the Journeyman games, which you know don't have the same sort of, I think, uh, stink attached to them. Uh, I'm not saying it's like uh, uh, gonna knock your socks off or anything, but it is exactly what it is, which is to say, it's, it's a '90s FMV game. Yeah, it's definitely got all the hallmarks of it. Yo, it's the, the mad, mo the mad, mad dog McCree of uh, of mobile suit Gundam games. <laughs> all right, speaking of gu uh, Gundam games, I do yep. want to just echo that the G Saver PS2 game does rule. It's of the Gundam speedruns I've done, it is the best one. I think it. It's got a pretty good shot of being on stage at a GDQ in the near future, which is pretty funny. So no you might way. might see that. You know, think yeah, think about you got to listen to that. A fantastic soundtrack. You got to listen to it if you haven't. Being exposed <laughs> to Cowboy Bebop before knowing that there was an anime, wild ass name. And then maybe six months down the road, I came across the tape, 
I'm just like, boy, and, and but the here, yeah, the, the, the PS1 like rail shooter thing, that's not yeah. so, yeah, that's kind of a it, bummer. It's not the best, but uh, to hear that uh, G Saviors actually have decent, I'll have to give that a shot because it was it was a it was a toss up back then, uh, for gun yeah, games. The, I mean, and the other good thing is that all the menu text is in English mm -hmm. and all of the voice acting is nice. in English, yeah, so you will you will understand the story, you'll know what you're doing. Um, you won't have the subtitle dialogue. That's in Japanese, but you know what? Whatever you, you, you know, as long as you can listen to the game, you're fine. Hey man, you, you know, uh, media that's that's maligned by fans. We on the show, but also me, even before that MHQ. You know, we've been longtime defenders of uh, Gundam X. Yes. And, <clears throat> you know, we have been in this uh, business long enough to see like the way that the perception of that show in the West has completely changed. Because I recall that show. Uh, being really maligned by fans. Oh who, my god! You know, most of the time in the early aughts, because of the lack of availability of the media, had never even seen it. But they were just regurgitating things that people said on forums, like, "Oh, I heard it's been MSG." Like, yeah, yeah. Well, that logic apply to that exactly. Oh, yeah, exactly. You know, and there's lots of stuff that completed its run, but is you know not that great. So I don't understand that. But you know, over the last you know, 24 years that I've been doing MHQ, I've seen the perception of G, I mean, sorry, uh, X really change from this, oh, it, it must suck because it was canceled to like, no, this is a really solid series facilitation that I'm glad to have. And, you know, seeing all that stuff on the internet, oh, it sucks, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just sitting there, I'm like, wait, pretty clean, Andy. I mean, there's a lot of questions and, you know, Polly and all this other stuff, but, you know, but... It started with the infamous um, second season of Double O, because you know second season of uh, in um, you know it was always like the next thing, something that was bad. It would then get eclipsed by the next. It, it, it's kind of crazy. I I don't understand why people just jump on the hive mind thing sometimes. I it, it's really crazy because I mean it, it's how can you really sit there and say things suck? Um, without seeing it, or just... I've been seeing a lot of dust-ups about Double Zeta, and people... God, it gets so much better if you give it time. If you give it time, uh, it gets better. I, I understand the beginning. It's rough, especially coming off of Zeta. Whole, it's not as good as Zeta to me, but I think it's a it's a worthy entry. But uh, just, to, just to see the vitriol for Double Zeta from people who have not even seen the... On Twitter, or Blue Sky, or whatever. Yeah. And of course, capital D. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All so... Everything. I have another question. Um, what, what are you guys' thoughts about um, the, the, you know, the adapt the the like English or not or the Western adaptations of anime projects? You know, like we've seen Ultraman, um, we've Piece. seen um, you know show. One Piece. Yeah, n not even really. Yeah, and even um, like Voltron and things like that. And there's oh, yes. kind of this blurring now, especially with. Um, with the animated projects that it's like, oh, is it truly anime? Is it not? I mean, wh what do you guys th thought about that? I mean, f me personally, it's like, as long as it's kind of a good story, I'm pretty controversial online a lot of times too. I, Tron, I mean, there was mm. huge. I usually appreciate the fact that they exist because of the jet, the discourse it generates. It's kind of like a film adaptation of your favorite book. Usually it's not going to live up to your memory of the novelization, <laughs> but <laughs> they're, just it's gonna force people to reappraise the source title things yeah yeah i mean in terms of like you know what whether or not it's it's worth getting concerned about whether you know as you bring in maybe more personnel or you're you're you know producing it elsewhere um you know is it like you know other sorts of characteristics of the work and they're always going to be imperfect labels right i mean this is right cause i feel like usually when i've seen this discourse it's like why wasn't this on my anime list or genres for, for anything it's like they're imperfect labels and categories and you know it's like uh like people do this you know like what are we <laughs> yeah. what are we really talking about, about here <laughs> yeah. well yeah i was just wondering because i know there's always there's been this barking now about like oh you know, if a if a Western studio does something kind of a weird thing, because it's like, is now anime really coming to a point where it's becoming something that's not just in a specific has to come from Japan and maybe it, you know, that style, the essence. And if it comes from other places, is that acceptable? I mean, inspired. I don't I kind of consider these women are making 
you know. It's, it's art. It's not, you know, champagne right. or, or cognac or something, right? It doesn't have to come from the anime region of Japan. Right. <laughs> from, you know, the grapes <laughs> that were transported over to California that are, you know. But, it, yeah, it's, it, I mean, because you see that with that. I mean, I mean, it, I, I think, I sometimes think it's, I always put it back to the thing where sometimes people get, you know, at one point they were uh felt special they felt unique because they felt something like that was their own and then when they see it kind of go um throughout people get mad it's like oh i was the first one to know about this but yeah it's 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 kind of an interesting thing that i see and it's kind of a trend i'm like i'm seeing people just like going on oh it's not you know this is not true anime it's like yeah but it's basically inspired by it, it doesn't you know so i mean if you want to get real technical anime is a french word for animation of course um, so true anime is the it's any any project that's animated uh, dual productions between France and Japan, especially in the 70s. But um, you know they took that they took that term and ran with it. Um, I think today it just depends on what your intentions are. Uh, like say with Voltron, uh, that's based on the anime property, so you're gonna do your own spin on it and represent it. I consider it anime. It's 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 definitely uh, made in that uh, sorry Avatar: The Last Airbender. Uh, at least close enough to anime that I would consider it anime, even though, of course, it's an American product. Um, you know, I'm sure that uh, anime studios have helped worked on it, but for the most part, I, I will uh, bestow it that honor. Same thing for Castlevania. You know, it's based on the Japanese property. They do any of the clear anime style. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, it's anime as far as, you know, I, I, I'm... Well, no, you bring yeah. up a good, you bring up a good question though. When yeah. it comes to like something like Voltron, it's like they could have done Voltron Legendary Defender as like with like a traditional American style animation, but they chose not to. It's more, yeah. it is, it is basically in it. I mean, if you didn't know any better, yeah, you would think that it was anime. That was just a subtitle or um, you know, um, dubbed over. Which is uh, which but... was, was lends me back to um, Avatar because the same. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I, I mean, so, uh, I an, you know, we've that's uh, an interesting question. So. In live action. <laughs> so, um, any closing? Steven, you got anything? I mean, it's, uh, you know, we we just wrapped our big O2 coverage. Robot Jocks is coming. Some CEO so, you know, Chris will be on an episode uh, this summer, hopefully. Uh, if you like, if you want to hear people talk about Turning Gundam, check out the, 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 Pat uh, the Patreon stuff. The first four episodes are free. And if you want to yeah. see... I'm working on a project where I'm playing PlayStation games. But... Oh, yeah. Yeah, co-signed everything PMC PS1 said. Library? Yeah, I'm, I'm just, you know, look, you know, I got time. <laughs> you know, we'll see how long it takes. <laughs> yeah, okay. long. <laughs> yeah if, you've, if you've liked what we've been saying and you want to hear more of PMC and I, definitely check out anything on the free, uh, you know, the main feed recommend in particular checking out the history episodes as a nice starting point if the idea of getting a physical fanzine in the mail has like tickled you um check out our social media presence on blue sky and twitter or just go right to our patreon if you sign up at the ten dollar level by april 10th so that's next wednesday you will get a physical copy of volume one mailed to you um so keep that in mind if you're um, interested in getting physical media such as a fanzine, which dives deep into the production history of the Big O. It's 4,000 plus. Well, thank you. Uh, Looks so cool. Look good. Thank you for uh, for thank having you. joined us. Um, you know, I, I consider all, all Mecha podcasts to sort of be like uh, kindred spirits because we're all sharing, um, you know, all of this knowledge and, and all of this commentary out of, you know, deep love for all of these things, even if there's stuff that, that annoys us sometimes. But, uh, yeah, we're all one one all right so um since uh neo wasn't here at the start um i, I will turn it back to you to uh to close us out guys from uh, giant robot fm and uh, we'll be back in a few weeks with another topic but Solbro, before we go can you let everybody know where they can uh reach us well, you can find all the links at mahq.net. That's what Gundam and Zone of the Enders, man. You want to see robots with penises? Jump on in, baby. We got you. <laughs> we redefine the word cockpit in that show. But yes, fantastic. Pl Planets also classic anime. Uh, there's a spotlight going on for that. <laughs>
若い系の方はトリコカード OK? Who told you that?